We're live. Hey there, everyone. Hi. So, how has your day been going? Yeah, I hope you're doing good and that you can hear us. Uh, please let us know. That's always the main thing when we start uh, going live. We never know if you can hear us or not. So if we get a yes, that would be awesome. Yeah, just leave us a comment right there. So, um, right now it's Saturday, basically um, a day for relaxing, we said. We also had quite a long day uh, behind us and did a lot of things. We were reorganizing our new creative corner. Yeah, that's why we were also a bit tired. Yeah, and we said it's perfect time basically to just relax, uh, to do some relaxed doodling, you know, to... Uh, to talk to you guys, uh, to you know, get some questions in, we can answer them. And drawing is basically a relaxation for us, so it's be it's actually fitting for a Saturday evening, right? Yeah, yeah, I think it is. Exactly. I um, mean, it's Saturday evening for us. It might be like morning for you. So good morning, actually. <laughs> yeah, that as well. If it's morning for you, well, we wish you a good Saturday, <laughs> <laughs> and we're glad you started it off with something creative. Yeah. Here in Berlin, we had a beautiful day. It was sunny uh, the whole time, and we really enjoyed the whole day. That's really amazing. So, how's the weather in your country? Is it okay? Do you have any clouds or rain, or is it just like here, so sunny that you just want to go outside and hang out with your friends? Yeah. That is. you're not allowed to do right now. That you're not allowed to do. We hope, really hope that everyone is safe, that all of you are um, safe and sound, that all of your close ones are healthy and that it stays that way. I think we'll get through this. And in the meantime, we will keep doing these live events. Oh. What's going on? Now you can see us. You, they couldn't see us? Yeah, I forgot to switch to, to, the, uh, to the scene. Ah, hello everyone. Ah. Nice to see you now. <laughs> 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 well, what, do, what what were they seeing? Uh, just our screen, the, the intro. Just the intro screen. You were seeing ah, this. <laughs> okay. All right. Yeah. But we're getting there. You know, we're also quite new with this new program, so yeah. be patient. But Sonia is like a technical magician. She's uh, She learned all of this stuff now in a couple of days and respect. Oh, come on. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Yeah. So, uh, thank you for reminding us. Thank you, thank you. Um, awesome. So, the plan for today um, would be, let's repeat it again shortly for everyone who just joined, um, to just do a really relaxed drawing. We will be drawing, doodling a bit, because it's a relaxation for us. And you can either get your own stationary piece of paper, pen, and draw with us. I mean, draw the same thing we do draw along or you can draw your own thing you know saturday is a great thing to just draw something and yeah relax a bit and you know the bait and the main thing of course is that you ask questions so we'll be here for you um please leave us questions in the comments and then we'll do our best to answer them yeah so our suggestion is just that you pick everything, anything that you want, uh, like aquarelle or just a pen, or you can also just go and fetch your old sketch sketches that you know that you need to work on um, and you said you're gonna do it later on, so now is the perfect time. So yes, go and get your sketchbook. And um, exactly, and you know, consider what you want to ask us. Um, you can basically ask us anything you want regarding ourselves, uh, if you want you know, a specific question yeah. regarding drawing, regarding art in general, creativity. Um, yeah, um, knock yourself out. Yeah. <laughs> That's supposed to be a Q&A plus yeah. doodling, as we said. So we're going to doodle and you ask the questions, we provide the answers. Yeah. Um, okay, so I think we can start now. I'm gonna just uh, check in our chat from time to time. Yeah, do that. Where do we have people from? Well, today from Indonesia, from oh, Slovenia. Wow. wow. Um, where are you from, guys? 
I know that one, uh, Pamela, is from Indonesia. Oh, Pamela, yeah. hello. Hi. Nice to have you here. I'm glad you made it this time. I know these times are not really so uh, so friendly for you right now. I mean, uh, it's probably night in Indonesia, I guess, or late evening. Um, so I'm really glad you joined. USA, we have some. Um, we have nature sketch from USA. Hello there. Where in USA are you from? Let us know. We're really interested. And Marshall is from Seattle. Hey Marshall, nice to see you again. I'm glad you came again. Then Ahmad from Egypt. Uh, Michelle is from Canada. Hey Ahmad, hey Michelle. Yeah. And we have Lexi from Scotland. Hey, Lexi. Uh, Ritika from India. Oh, Ritika joined again. Hi. Lila from Munich. Radka from Czech Republic. Wow. Wow, so that's quite a nice crowd. Nice crowd, people, and yeah. names are repeating, so welcome back. I'm really yeah. glad you, you joined us again. Okay. Yeah, so I think we can start. What, what are you going to do today, Kasper? So, um, I am going to sketch some landscapes today because this is something I'm missing so much. We cannot travel, it was winter anyways, so we weren't really outside, outdoors sketching, something I really love to do. And I really love to sketch landscapes. Um, and I've been missing that now for like half a year. And now when it's finally getting warmer, we cannot go out because, you know, of the obvious reasons, we were just staying in. So um, I said, let's just, you know, draw from reference. And I was thinking of two of my beloved landscapes, I would say. Um, first is the Slovenia, my homeland, our homeland, uh, with beautiful um, Alps. I really like drawing uh, mountains, and where we live right now, it's like totally flat. Everything's flat. And the second one is Tuscany. I have beautiful memories of Tuscany. We went there several times to draw because it's just breathtaking and uh, so photogenic. I mean, like sketchogenic. Actually, mm, yeah. you don't have to know how to draw. You just, you know, yeah. see it and put something on paper and yeah. it looks good. I mean, yeah. it's, it's a stunning landscape. So, um, yeah, these two. And I will just uh, use a pencil, um, I think, today. Feels good right now. So you can choose to draw along. Uh, we will blend in the, the view now and then, now and again. Or you can just, you know, repeat after me. Um, don't stress. I... I'm drawing pretty fast usually, but it's not the idea today that you, you know, really repeat everything after me. You can take a screenshot of the photo that we blend in and you can finish it later. It's basically supposed to be relaxed. Yeah, maybe I can also do uh, a bit longer just uh, scene where you can also see the uh, photos again and then you can do a screenshot. Yeah, so... Anyone who wants to draw along with me right now, do a screenshot of this of this scene. Yeah. I will also um, pull it up for myself on the computer, yeah. on the other one, so I see what I'm doing. Well, yeah, hello to Barcelona, to Pau, and good morning, Andrew. So, Andrew, I'm guessing you're from, you're from the States, if it's morning. All right. Probably. Okay. Kalin also said, hello, greetings from Bulgari. Do you have any advice about figure drawing, some tips or lessons? Well, this is something that Kasper will do, right? In the next, um, in the next weeks. Yeah. So I actually, uh, one of my challenges is to learn to draw people and learn to draw faces. I, this is a challenge I set for myself in 2020. So um, right now I... Whoa, sorry. Oops. Sorry about that. So right now um, I'm learning this so I can pass it on to you. But on Monday we have another live session and we're going to do the so-called creative exercise and we're going to create creative characters. So it's gonna, not going to be perfect people fi figures, but it's a great way to start to overcome the fear of drawing faces in people. So um, yeah, Monday is a good day to join and dive into that. All right. So um, yeah, basically just keep the questions coming and we'll do our best. 
to answer them. Yeah, Andrew also says he's not from USA. Oh, okay. So, no. Andrew, where are you from? Tell us your where is your country located? Does that make any sense? Okay, and we also have uh, one really nice comment from uh, Rashika. Did I pronounce that correctly? Um, hello guys from USA, you are wonderful. Those YouTube lives are so uplifting. Thank you. <laughs> oh, thanks a lot. That's that's really great to hear. Yeah, we're gonna get we're getting better today. We're really a bit uh, tired because all all the things that we did today. But um, yeah, we're gonna get into the groove and be a bit even better. So what are you going to do? Are you going to sketch uh, the same scene that Gashpur is sketching or are you just picking your old sketchbooks and creating something new for yourself? Because I was thinking I would like to take one of my old sketches that I never done uh, till the end and I think I'm gonna do that and I'm gonna steal a pen from Gashpur. Mm. So let me uh, tell you a bit about what I'm doing right now. Um, what I like about landscape sketching basically is that um, it's like reading the landscape. It helps you understand the landscape. Because I'm a, I studied landscape architecture. I still work as a landscape architect as my daytime job. Um, basically, beside landscapes. That's why I, it's important for me to understand landscapes and the same goes for Sonia. This is what basically got us into drawing in the first place, right? Yeah. 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 So um, when you draw a landscape, you really take time to really observe and understand all the structures and all the feature and everything that's going on. For example, I noticed, okay, so right now I drew this hill up front and in the back I see there are some trees which tells me basically that there's probably some water. You know, when, when there's trees, there's water. And then we have this nice rolling hills of Tuscany. This is actually a place we visited with Sonia years ago. Maybe you can slow down a bit, just for, for those who follow you doing the task, Tuscany. Mm -hmm. Because we just got a comment from Anne that she's trying to follow, but you're just too fast. All right, Anne. Yeah. No worries, you don't need to draw every line I do and you don't need to do it as fast as I do. Um, Explain maybe what's in your head, what, what, what's the first thing you think about when you start drawing mm -hmm. something like this. That's a good point. So maybe if you, um, right now, look at what I've just drawn. I've drawn basically um, forms. Basically I've drawn forms, let's say this is one form like that and here in the front is another form and where I get where I get these forms from is by observing the image so if you blend it in again Sonia the image I I will um, explain what I meant when you see up front you see some vineyards right and then right from those vineyards you see are on the other side of the road are some olive trees and then beyond those vineyards you know still before the farm there are there is some basically the it's, uh, it's, it's, used, it's probably a field, a wheat field, that's already been uh, cropped or something. So these are all different, uh, different areas. And it's great when you're drawing landscapes to think of these areas as single um, uniform forms. Mm -hmm. Can you switch again, Beth? To, to top down? To top down, yeah. Mm -hmm. So, for example, this, this was... This is the vineyard field I was talking about, right, this here. And then this right over here are, are the olive trees. And here is this, is this wheat field. And I'm basically, I know it's much more complex, but it's usually great, it's usually a good idea to simplify it in your head and say, well, yeah, this right here, this is where the olives grow. So I will just, you know, fill it with this olive trees. And I basically, through that, I just made the landscape more... No horizon line, no vanishing line. Oh yeah, it will come. It will come. We will we'll go there. I'm it's coming. It's coming. I, I'm basically... I, I started from the front... From the front... Um, 
plane and I will continue building the image up to the back. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, maybe you just draw and I'm gonna read a comment or yeah. two. Um, yeah, so uh, Peter is asking if we struggle to find good vistas to draw in flat Berlin because he has the same problem in Midwest USA. And yes, we are struggling. <laughs> Peter, this is so hard. We know your struggle. We know yes. what you mean. I'm missing uh, any, you know, any point of reference, anything yeah. vertical. It's like people here in Berlin, they call, you know, hills that are 20 meters high mountains. So, yeah, you can imagine what it is like. Yeah, it's not easy. And that's why we Google a lot. Uh, what are the best views over Berlin? What are the best vistas that we can find in Berlin? Sometimes those are rooftops, um, so that we can do some skylines, um, or maybe we do just like city scenes. That's also something that we never did before, but we're doing it now more often than before. Um, yeah. One point would be interesting that I would recommend if you if you live in an area or go to an area that doesn't have many you know verticals, not much topography, which is actually really harder to draw is to look for other landmarks in the landscape, you know, uh, a tree, like a lone tree that is quite, um, I don't know, is really impressive, or um, a farm, or, you know, some buildings, or a group of, you know, something that can lead the eye, something that you can really, a road, you know, make sure there's maybe a road around, or, or, a, or a lake, or a, um, a water, some water feature. So anything that draws the eye, anything that we normally use to orientate, orient ourselves in the landscape. And this will also make the sketch actually more interesting if you pick that as your motive instead of just, you know, normal mm. flat field. But if we would explain it's a bit easier, we could say that we're always searching for elements that give some additional value to sketch. If you find those, usually you can put them in the foreground do you say foreground yeah yeah so it's in focus maybe in focus yeah um and through that usually you can create a pretty good sketch oh hi honey from slovenia nice to have you how to be aware of perspective lines sometimes my sketch is not really fit into the lines or objects are not in the same proportion that's a good question. So I would say drawing correctly in perspective is, um, this is maybe boldly said, but it's almost, I would say, pointless. Let me explain. <coughs> perspective is actually an illusion. Um, I, in, in the sense that we never, we never see things the way we draw them in perfect perspective, right? Because we have two eyes and <coughs> actually, you know, we move around all the time. So like a perfect perspective image is not like a realistic image, but it is a good representation of space. It helps. It's like a tool. So when you're drawing a very specific view at home, let's say, I don't know, maybe you're an architect and need to represent an image correctly, or you want to draw like a, a city scene where there is important and all the buildings go to a certain perspective point, then it's a good idea to um, make some construction lines and help um, yourself with the perspective. But if you're outside sketching, to be honest, like this view I'm sketching right now, I don't really think about perspective and proportions, I, because they would just distract me more, I just concentrate on copying what I see to to the paper. What what were you saying, Sonia? Is it something you would also confirm? Um, yeah, yeah. I I think I would I would agree with you. Um, because um, well. It, it also depends on graphic, right? I mean, sometimes when I'm, when we're teaching, we usually say that, that of course, our students need to, to use the, the lines as well, right? Um, and 
there's a point where you know that you just need to start improvising as well. Um, and I think you you develop this feeling as well through through practice. Like when you sketch for a longer period of time, you just know how the how the sketch looks like, how it turns out better. So you just l let let go of some certain elements that you don't need, um, because something is theory and then something is also aesthetics. Uh, and we usually try to combine both of, the, of those, right? Yeah, it, it, sketching is definitely, uh, drawing in general, is definitely um, an art of omitting, an art of not drawing what is not essential, basically, if that makes sense. Yeah. Have we got any other, any other questions? So... <laughs> yeah. Hello, Vladimir. No. That's not uh, possible. I'm fortunate. I'm sorry. Um, hi. Hi, Indra, Indranil. Hi. Um, no, there's no, no other questions right now. I struggle with perspective and uh, how can I improve? So, improve for perspective or improve in general uh, with your drawing or art skills? Just in drawing. Just in drawing, in yeah. general. Mm -hmm. You want to answer? Yeah. Um, first, it's nice that uh, oof, yeah, it has many answers probably. But I would just say that you need to start... Um, Drawing in perspective. Um, hmm. Okay, so you, you have some basic basic tips that you can use, right? I mean, there's the horizon line and you have vanishing points and you, you know how this works. You have like one point perspective and two point perspective and it's, and even more, you have three point perspective and many more things that you can consider in your sketches. But um, I would just, First of all, maybe just it depends what you would like to do, but uh, just to know that those things exist. And then if you're doing like a perspective in, in a city scene or something, you, it's very nice if you just start with, um, with pinpointing the heads of the people on the horizon line in different sizes. Through that you're going to get this feeling for the for the depth in sketch and that's also really nice. Um, if you create that then everything what you're gonna draw in addition will look like it's in perspective. Um, yeah, Gashper, what would you suggest as a main or first thing that you can do? This is basically very good what you just said. Um, that all to realize heads of all people are always on the horizon line. Yeah. So basically, if you have that in mind, then your at least eye height perspectives will almost they will almost always be correct um, because this is such a simple trick um, that nobody maybe tells you in this simple way. But heads of all people are always on the horizon line, mm -hmm. and I have a tip for you um, for starting to practice. We actually created sim simple perspective tips called cardscapes. Um, if you haven't heard about Cardscapes, um, we will find the link and link it below. You can download free PDFs that we made and check out the different perspective drawing tips um, that will help you. They're just simple tricks, but they will already improve your perspective drawings a lot. You know, this I'm going to find those for you. Yeah, Sonia will link it in the, in the, in the comments. But yeah, check those out. Check our cards, Cardscapes out. It's uh, on a... A page called Gumroad. You can um, just go there. Um, we have free PDFs you can download. You can also order them as actual postcards. Um, but yeah, check it out. I think those tips will already help you a lot. Okay. So this is the the link to the to the page where where you can find um, some additional 
material like these three PDFs and also the material that we used last time for the watercolor mixing chart um, or for creativity boosting exercises and stuff like that. Okay, so a few questions came in. All right, hit so, us. Pamela, uh, she's depressed while, while painting and she's not an architect. Uh, yeah, balance is the key. Um, why are you depressed while painting? I mean... Do you have the feeling that your uh, works are not good enough? And that they're not... Uh, basically, they, it doesn't com come out the, the way you expect it to be? Is that it? Because this is a really common thing. Um, it's something we also actually have. Yeah. And maybe um, we explain very short the concept of the gap. First of all, if you're if you're finished with your sketches or doodling or whatever, you can always go to our Facebook group, Linescapers, Linescapers, and in this group, um, you can post photos and pictures and sketches, everything what you draw. Um, and then we can we can look at them together and of course you're gonna get the feedback from us as well So if you go there, um, I'm gonna link that as well to to the chat and Yeah, just post post everything that you drawn there Okay, okay, so um, Yeah, you want to continue with the topic or should we should we move on to other topics? I would want to cr answer this question real quick because I think it will bring value to everyone. Okay, do it. all right, so um, switch to me drawing. Yeah, I will draw something here. So maybe you heard of the concept of the gap. I will come back to this drawing, guys. Don't worry. I just want to draw this real quick. So this explains it perfectly. We heard it the first time from um, Ira Glass. He's a producer. And he explained this interesting concept of the artist's gap. Where there is a certain time where you start learning art or your skill or your craft whatever it is it basically applies to every craft i would say you get exposed to all the good works you know nowadays we have instagram we have facebook you know you watch us on youtube you see a lot of good stuff it's like easy to see good work because good artists can present themselves now so you're bombarded with all the good stuff and you also learn about theory about what is you know good classics and everything and then you know what it's supposed to look like so you have the theoretical knowledge, you know, you also maybe started to learn some theory, how to do this, how to do that, and you basically already, you, you know a lot. So this is, um, let's say, this is your, um, this is time, right? And let's, let's draw your first, your, your um, you start learning, and then your knowledge curve goes up really fast, right? And then there comes a time where you know enough, and and you stop you know really accelerating but your skills usually don't follow as fast they usually lag behind so this is your skill right and then at a certain point your skills match your knowledge and you actually are that good as as good as you want to be so this is skill and this time in between is called the gap, the perception gap, the artist's gap. And this is a very frustrating time because you already have the knowledge, but you don't have the skill. And when you do something, you know it's bad. You just know it's bad. But you know, you cannot do anything about it because your hand cannot follow. <laughs> and it's very frustrating. And most of the time, if you feel your work is not good enough, you might be in the gap. Yeah. Yeah, and that's also really important to know that you're getting there, your knowledge is there, but your skills are not there yet. So just be patient and just keep on going. Keep on drawing, as we always say. Um, yeah, there's also um, a question from Ahmed. Please could you tell um, what's the best exercise to improve line quality? All right, there is actually a good, a good way to do that. Um, we did a video, I think a while back, maybe uh, we could link it. 
right? How to draw lines. Um, this is an exercise that Sonia always does with her students at the beginning, and it helps uh, train the hand to draw straight lines, squiggly lines. It basically allows you to gain control while also not setting you under pressure to draw something amazing or impressive. Um, and I think it's a great way to to start uh, drawing lines. Right, Sonia? Yeah. Um, well, first of all, I'm gonna put the the exercise in the um, in the description in the chat. Um, but yeah, I mean, you can do a lot just by you know the 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 first thing that I usually say to my to my students is that they should do it like five or ten times, ten ten minutes per day, and they can use like a small sketchbook and just do some lines. Maybe I also have have it here. Um, it's really not complicated, it's pretty easy. And the thing is that you need to you need to do lines, you need to, to create the lines in different directions. So it's not like, usually we are really confident when we draw the lines from, from the right side to the left, right? Especially if you're like, if you're usually using your right hand. Um, and for, for example, from up to down, it goes also pretty fast, but if you're doing it like from from down from the from the end of the page upward, it's not going normally. And also from left to right, it's also a bit complicated. So what you need to train, what you need to work on, are also th those movements that you can anticipate or just direct your hand while sketching. And that's why those hand exercises are so important. Let me just fetch the fetch the uh, exercise for you. So meanwhile, I can explain a bit for those of you who are following with me on this sketch what I just did. So this is a very important step, I would say, in the end, where um, your create depth uh, for the sketch. What I just did is I created um, I separated these different layers. This is the front, let's say, the, the layer up front. And then there is a bit more in the next layer is this farmhouse with the trees around it. Then we have the another hills. So I separated these different layers um, by making some of them dark, like this one here, and some of them light, you know, and then switching between those. So bright, dark, then you have this bright here and bright, and then dark again, and then bright again. And I could continue doing this, you know, I could do, do another one dark. Yeah. So this switching between dark and light layers will create depth in a sketch. And it's usually not realistic. It's usually not like that. You know, it's not that the first, you know, thing is actually the, the, the frontmost layer is actually darker and then the second one is lighter and then darker again. But if you want to create an illusion of depth, because sketches, they are not really a representation of reality. They're actually a representation of our mind's eye, what we see. So um, if you want to create an illusion of that, you can switch between those. Okay, so Anne asked my pencil sm smudges, mm -hmm. and it all comes off on my hand. Mm -hmm. Any advice for pencils? And then Hani also uh, wrote back that have a paper under your hand and a graffiti drawing under one smudge. Do you have some additional advice? Um, <laughs> I would also say embrace the smudge. <laughs> embrace the smudge. Or just use a bit harder graffiti lines. Or some, you know, you have like this uh, HB pencils are the standard ones that you get if you're just buying like some office supplies, but if you're buying something to draw, you can pick or choose between different, um, how do you say, Tim. some are harder and some are a bit softer. Uh, some some pens are a bit softer and you can choose a bit harder one for you so it won't smudge so much. Yeah. Yeah. I also would say embrace the smudge. Look, embrace the smudge. I would just, I will smudge it a bit and I actually think it will, it will look better now, you know? Just smudge it in a few places, make it a bit softer. You know, look at that. 
All right. Yeah. Do you have any recommend recommended sources in studying perspective? I'm having trouble, especially in drawing landscapes. All right. Well, um, maybe uh, it comes off self-serving, but yeah, we do have actually our own videos. <laughs> um, we don't want this this to be like a self-promotion. We don't want this to be a self-promotion. <laughs> not live at stream, all. no, really. No, this live stream is not promoting our channel at all. So do not subscribe <laughs> and do not share it with your friends. And uh, yeah. Just so you know, <laughs> we do have, we have, um, we, we did a couple of videos. I think we did two really good ones uh, where we um, basically explained the perspective. Uh, one of the recent ones is five tips for drawing perspective on our channel. I think we did it a couple of months ago. And there is one, uh, there's a year old, how to draw landscapes. Um, and I think there's all, a lot of what I just explained here and what yeah. I applied here is explained in that video. Yeah, so I'm gonna go to the next question and that's what do you omit? So how do you know what to leave away yeah. when you're sketching, especially when you're doing landscapes? Because mm. there are so many informations. Mm. How do you just mm. filter out what's important mm. and what's not? Yeah, that's a good question. All right, could you switch back to the um, photo I was just drawing? So, um, a good start, a good start is to only draw the outlines. If you look at the photo, you will see basically you could just draw the outline of the vineyard. You know, just the, the thing up front, this is the vineyard. Um, if you just draw basically the borders of these areas, you know, just outline the, the area of the vineyard. Then outline the area of the orchard with the olive trees, you know, on the right side. Then just outline the area um, of, the, of, the, of, the, of the scrub field on the left side from that and just outline the area of those trees around the house. This will already omit unnecessary details inside and give you a good structure. Okay, I'm gonna switch now. Yeah, so now I'll show you again what I meant. So this is just the outline basically of the vineyard. This is the outline of the orchard. You know, I also actually, you know, draw, drew a border and then the outline of this crop field. And what I did then is just add some texture to represent what is actually in there. So for the vineyard, I just added the texture of the lines because I know the, the, the vines are uh, basically planted um, in lines. And then I added this uh, small stick-like texture because this is representing the, 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 the vineyard, the way it's set up. And for the orchard, I didn't draw all the trees, but you know, to make it recognizable as an orchard, I you know just created these small, small circles to represent the olive trees, right? All olive growth, maybe it is, yeah. And then and the same goes for this uh, crop field. Um, I just added some lines to to show the direction, and then this these dots are basically those hay. Rolls, or I don't know what you call them. Hay, hay rolls, hay, rolls of hay. You know. I don't even know how it's called in Slovene. We don't. I don't even know what's it called in German. So the, the you know piles of hay. <laughs> so I didn't draw all of them. I just drew enough to uh, represent and to make it recognizable. So this is how I omit the details by you know just starting from the essential outline mm -hmm. and then um, adding some texture to make it recognizable. Yeah. You know. So what you what you're basically saying you're first trying to create some sort of order, right? Mm, yeah. And then afterwards you just fill in the details, yeah. but also in some sort of order. So if, if you're doing first the outline, yeah, in this scene for each area that you would like to later on fill with details, yeah, and then you're just doing it step by step. You're not like do you do one one thing one area like this one till the end you fill it with details yeah. and then go to the next one yeah or do you come back later on and you fill the details here as well i usually fill them the one till the end and mm -hmm. then go to the next one and then in the end i move back and you know i i add maybe some details like the tree trunks of the trees when i see uh, it's maybe not enough or maybe if i have too much time um, but Usually, yeah, that's how I do it. I just go from one area to the next one, fill them in, and yeah. Mm 
-hmm. in the trees you you saw that basically all the vegetation i didn't draw all the all the tree trunks or the branches or the leaves i just rendered it dark because it's also usually uh, the vegetation is the darkest uh, element in the view so i just rendered it and smudged it uh, until it's unrecognizable <laughs> Okay, so here here we get we got uh, from Blash. Blash said it's bale. This hay hay thing is that we that you that you mentioned that we don't know the name. It's called bale in Slovene. In, in Slovene. What's it called in English, guys? Can someone tell me what this hay roll is? It maybe hay. Is, maybe it's just hay roll. It could well. Michel Wilm, Wilman uh, said it's bale. So I'm not sure if that's the same thing. Bale. Bale. Like bale? I don't know. It could be a bale. <laughs> Or it's a bale. Wheat, wheat tube. Wheat tube. Is the from the wheat tube? No, now you can say anything you want and we will believe you. Uh, you know, the wheat tubes. This sounds... Yeah, it sounds uh, legit. It sounds like it's true, right? It sounds like it's true. Yeah. Okay, wheat tubes, guys. Um, okay, so we have some, some question which is not related to, uh, to our topic, but... Yeah. Uh, Arlene uh, is having a question um, about video recording setup. Yeah. Are we using a mic now because our sound is of our voices is very clear and crisp? All right. Uh, Thank you. Thanks. We like to hear that. We trained this crisp sound. So basically, uh, yeah. we spent like the whole afternoon yesterday to talk more crisply and to make our sounds, our voices more crisp. Yes. Uh, so that's why it's sounding more crisp. Today. That's why we're also a bit tired. It's yeah, we're a little bit tired because of that, but you can almost bite into our sound. Yeah. Um no, we're actually <laughs> <laughs> what we're using is just a microphone of our uh computer. Yeah. The built in uh, yeah. mic from the iMac. Yeah. We also have this Zoom recorder, um, but we we don't have the cable. We don't have the cable. And if yeah. we order any all the stores are obviously closed. Yes. And if we order one, it's going to take weeks. So, yeah, we're just going with the inbuilt yeah. mic. Yeah, we're just waiting for you to complain and say, we can't handle this anymore. You need to buy something. You need to get this cable now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay, what, what else? Um, so, uh, one question. Sonia, do we want to switch? Because uh, I'm basically done with my drawing, and You're basically you can done. Gla gladly take over with yours. Uh, I, I will, I'm not sure if I would like to, um, because I'm here in the chat and I, I love the company. All right, so then I will go on to the next. Uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna uh, uh, read a comment or two, right? Yeah, read okay. a comment or two, and I will go to the next one. Okay, so first, uh, Ahmed said thank you very much. Swag for life. Uh, it's just uh, has just arrived to our uh, live, live chat. Uh, nice hi, to have you. Uh, Leon Brachun is also saying hi. Hello, Leon. Uh, so everyone is concurring that it's called Hey Bay Bale Bale. Hey. So wheat tube was hey actually uh, that was not true. Wheat, yeah. <laughs> but wheat tube, um, and it's pronounced Bale. B A Y L E. Bail, yeah, bail, like bail and uh, bail. Okay, thanks. Uh, Heuballen. Ah. Heuballen in German, <laughs> right? Heuballen. Stinker <laughs> Katze. Yeah, just wrote us. Uh, we can't handle this anymore. <laughs> Heuballen. <laughs> <laughs> or you cannot handle the sound. <laughs> All right. Okay. Um, could you? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, get the cable now. <laughs> yeah, we'll, we'll, okay. we'll do something. Um, and uh, Stinka Katza says hello from Austria quarantine. Hey, hello back. Hope you're safe. Yeah, Hope we don't. You're... We're not having any quarantine here yet, but I mean, quarantine is you know we're, we don't we're not allowed to go out right now. I mean, we are sorry, we are allowed to go out yeah. just in pairs and just with people from your own uh, household. So. But we basically avoid any um, going out. We chill on the balcony and yeah, that's, that's it. And yeah. we cook a lot <laughs> and we eat a lot. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, and we're just trying to figure out how this whole setup with, uh, with new working corner, corner uh, is going to 
look at look out at the end. Would you be interested in like a video and a tour of our new creative corner? Let us know because uh, we were thinking about doing something like that. And then if you think it's going to be interesting, yeah. interesting, we can gladly show you around how we organized all our art materials, all our things to be as productive and creative as possible. Because the creative corner applies that it's it's very big, right? So the video <laughs> the video is going to be very detailed. It's not going to be like look. This is my creative space. It's just going to be like my material here. <laughs> my, We're going to take gonna time. I'm going to show you every small <laughs> Everything inch. we own of our <laughs> sketching material. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> yeah um, All right. Yeah, people want it. All right, <laughs> let's do that. Carlos uh, is sending greetings from Chile. And he says, amazing channel. Thank you very much. Thank you, Carlos. So, Sonia, let me just ask you, please, to go on another image. Yeah. So I can show you um, what I will be drawing next. All right. So, uh, this isn't it? Isn't it nice? Uh, it's so green. It's so green. It's, it has mountains. It has mountains. So yeah. um, let's let's switch a bit. For now, I, I, I use the pen, a pencil now. Sorry, and now I will use a pen and the marker. So you can stay with a pencil if you want, or if you're following me, but you can do whatever you want, basically. Um, and this is a quite a different landscape, um, because it's a way, I mean, in the front we obviously have some nice uh, green um, grass, of, it's probably a golf course or something. Yeah, it is. But in, then right after it, uh, right behind it, there's like wild nature, and the mountains you see, it's a natural, it's a natural, a uh, park, a um, national park in Slovenia with the highest mountains and everything, beautiful setting. And um, yeah, let's let's draw that right now. Okay, so I'm gonna switch to top down. Yeah. And um, you can yeah you can continue <coughs> with the questions and I'll just yeah. yeah. Continue here. So our viewers are uh, are excited for our creative corner tour that we're gonna do in the future. We promise. Um, yeah, it's a work setup and creative setup. So basically, it's everything combined. Um, yeah, what else? We are very lovely, said Ahmed. Thank you, Ahmed. Um, yeah, whatever questions you have, also not regarding the drawings, uh, yeah. whatever you want to know, this is the chance to ask. Yeah. This is basically your chance to ask. For sure. For sure. Uh, Dexter is asking, where did you find a reference like that? Like that? Um, Dexter, I already knew the place, uh, so I just googled it. <laughs> yeah. Um, this is called Boats. It's a city, or city is a small town in Slovenian Alps, and uh, yeah, this is the area around it. Yeah. So we just. Uh, just joined us. Hi Zoe, no you're not too late. Well, hey Zoe, <laughs> nice to have you. We've just, uh, for everyone who's just joined later, we're just basically chilling here uh, and you can ask us questions, we answer them and you can draw along or just, or just, you know, hang around. Totally fine. So uh, Pamela asked, uh, what's your favorite snacks in quarantine? Oh, right. Now we're getting to the juicy questions. What's yours, Sonia? <laughs> um, uh, do we have snacks? I mean, I really like those tortilla chips. Chips. Well, yeah, the yeah, I love tortillas. Those, yeah, yeah. yeah the, I, I, whenever I go out, you know, I, I try to buy as much at the same time as possible, so we don't have to go out as much. And then I usually buy one bag of tortilla chips. And we demolish them in the same day when they come home. So, yeah. <laughs> Tortilla chips goes pretty fast. Uh, so, Zoe, we, we said that everyone who wants to sketch with us, the scene that Gaspar is drawing, um, can make a screenshot. And then you can just draw it from your computer. And Gaspar is just drawing along the top-down view so that you can join him and follow his instructions. So I'm gonna put on the the scene once again and you can do a screenshot, okay? 
yeah hmm. but what what i enjoy enjoyed in the last week is that uh, i baked two times right i mean right. Um, that was one one of the best things to just have um something that you can that you can um nibble on all the time or just from time to time with coffee or tea oh sona did like the best uh, strawberry yogurt cake today oh we still, we, we, obviously, we ate way too much, but. Um. But the good thing is also that a friend of ours is a Pilates instructor. So um, she invited us to join them. So two times per week, we're doing Pilates with her online, which is working uh, amazingly good for us. Uh, so we have the feeling we do also something for our body. Yeah, so it's not related to your question, but yeah. we feel much better if we tell you that, you know. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Just so you know, we do work out, guys. <laughs> um, what do you do now in quarantine, besides uh, joining us for a live stream? Are you cooking, baking, or cleaning the apartment? Are you just laying in your pajamas uh, on your couch all the time? What's, what's your thing? What, what do you, how do you spend your time, uh, especially now that you have a bit more time I hope yeah Zoe is also thanking us I think I went through all the questions all right mm. so I can tell again what I've just come up with right now um, in my sketch right um, so as the same way uh, as I started the one before maybe now it's even more clear because we have a, because we have such a because we have a much finer line. Can I ask you at this point, did you intentionally use the pen instead of the pencil? Yeah. Why? Um, I wanted, I think it would be, it would be much clearer um, to show the process with a pen mm -hmm. because it's a clear line. You can see the outlines very clearly and, uh, and yeah, I also just feel like Drawing with a pen a bit. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but I, I think for the process, just to, if I if I see the top down, down with the camera, it looks so nice and crisp and all the areas uh, that you mentioned before are really easy to be seen. So that's, that's, that's a really good thing. Um, so what's the next thing? What, what are you doing right now? So right now, basically, I started with the outlines. Like I said before, when drawing a landscape, think in terms of volumes and surfaces. So basically these are this grass here and this you know water and this bottom of the valley. These are all surfaces. And then we have the volumes, the trees and you know the, the different layers of the forest and the you know single trees. And then the areas in the back, the mountains are almost again like just surfaces. What I did I this helped me to understand them better, seeing it this way, and helped me to do outlines of them. So this is what I did. I did outlines of these different areas. So, for example, this grass area here, I just did an outline of that. The, this tree group, I just did the outline first. So the water, I just did this sinuous outline first. Also the first layer of the forest, I just did the outline. And the same thing on the left side. And then I went with the outlines of these different hills and layers all the way to the back um, to the back layer of the view. Mm -hmm. And this help me, helps me structure the image. And now, as I said before, I will um, continue with adding textures. And when I'll be doing that, I will think again in terms of you know bright surface, dark surface, bright surface, dark surface to, to create an image of uh, illusion of depth. And now the textures I'll be using don't have to be exact. They don't have, I will not draw every leaf. Basically what I'll do is just like, really, I'll really just, you know, do inside of those lines. Mm. And then maybe I'll do some areas a bit darker, you know, and maybe there will be a bit of a tree trunk visible, but mm -hmm. this is the first thing that I'll do. I won't do, I won't do much. Yeah. Zoe thinks that it's awesome that Kasper 
just got it down in paper like that. I can never do it. I would be way off the moment I put pen on paper. Yeah, so that's just practice. It's just practice. Just so keep on drawing. You're gonna get there. We promise. Especially Zoe, because I've seen how much you progressed uh, in the last months because I've been following what you do on Instagram. Um, it's you can already see the improvement, and maybe you still have another goal in your head, and you see other works, and you want to get there, and you maybe haven't have even realized that you've improved yourself so much. So. Um, this is al always something to keep in mind. Don't be so hard on yourself um, when judging your own work. And yeah, just keep, just keep working. Compare yourself from you from yesterday. Yeah. I, 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 you know, I've drawn so many of these views. So yeah. So I just uh, confirmed all your requests to join the Lionscapers group. Welcome. Please post your sketches and your doodles. It's gonna uh, be awesome, especially when we uh, can check on them and give you some feedback. That's something that we really like to do. So please keep them coming. Um, yeah, so regarding the question that we asked before, what are you doing in quarantine? <laughs> we have some very interesting uh, answers. All right, let's hear it. <laughs> Abigail is trying to learn to play ukulele. Oh, that's awesome, Abigail. Really? Yeah, ukulele? Yeah. How did you, did, you, yeah. did you have a ukulele uh, at your place already or did you have to like go out and risk and get one? Yeah. So, uh, Andrew does cooking and yes, he does do cleaning as well. Uh, so, we're not alone in it, Gasper. We do it good. as well. Uh, oh, wow. Michelle, uh, three things each day. Meditate, exercise, draw. That's a great M -E -D, plan, Michelle. M-E-D. My meds. Wow, awesome. I like it. Really? That's really good. I like it a lot. Um, I need to write it down. It's so awesome. Thank you. M-E-D. Meditate, exercise, and draw. Zoe does YouTube yoga, working from home, sketching and painting, cooking every day, and playing Nintendo Switch. <laughs> I couldn't resist the temptation and bought it um, and bought one last week. Yeah. Uh, yes. If there's a time for you know games, it's right now. I yeah. Think. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So now we go back to to the questions. We have a few drawing questions. Again, uh, do you use only one marker pen type in a drawing, or do you use or combine more than one? We usually combine more than one. We like to do that. We like to do mixed media sketches because um, it, it's very diverse and if you're not so skilled in one technique, for example, if you want to do great aquarels uh, or watercolors, then, then, you, then you need to be very good at it so that you can get this special effect of some sort of textures and stuff like that. But you can get this kind of effect also with, with watercolor, pencils, or just a graffiti pen, or whatever. So, yeah, we really like to combine different techniques. Yeah, definitely. That's what I just started doing right now. I just took a marker, it's a black marker, and started um, adding, adding in some darker areas. Yeah. Okay. Uh, we just got a, um, but I don't know how this works, works, but helpful advice. My girlfriend wants kids and I'm not really ready for kids yet. But when I'm drunk and my guard is down, she tricks me into dumping. Oh God. Okay. So this is maybe, uh, <laughs> how can we, um, can maybe, you maybe write us privately? And we'll answer you our question, uh, our opinion. Yeah, sorry, I'm going to be much better when reading those comments in the future because I don't want to, uh, to, to read those kind of things out loud. I'm blushing right now because I think that's really not appropriate. And I would like to emphasize to our group that just if you want to, that we help you with some sort of personal questions, please write us privately and don't post those kind of things to our group but uh, yeah we 
we'll answer if you want to, if we can. If we, if you have a personal thing, we'll do our best to answer you. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, sure. Okay. Uh, yeah, let's let's keep on drawing. So that was one one thing. Do you also join urban sketching before COVID nineteen was eighteen? Um, we we didn't because it was just um, I don't know <clears throat> why didn't we join? We were just so busy usually. Um, um, good question. Yeah, we we know a lot of people who really yeah. went to meetings, who were really engaged in urban sketchers. For those of you who don't know urban sketchers, it's like a global movement um, of people who go out and sketch usually in urban uh, environments. And some of them are amazingly good. And it's become a, a great movement that um, supports and uh, promotes sketching as a, just a form of, you know, not professional art form, but just a form of spending time and seeing seeing the environment. I think their motto is seeing the world one drawing at a time. So yeah, um, we actually wanted to a couple of times now and we never really managed to go to the meetings. So there is a group here in Berlin. I think we will definitely, definitely do that in the future. How long have you been practicing architecture and what, which aspect of architecture do you enjoy the most? All right. Hmm. I practiced landscape architecture for four years and then after a while, after two years and a half here working in Berlin, um, I got really sick. I think I got burnout in combination with, with one additional disease and uh, I was so exhausted that I stopped doing landscape architecture in office. Um, but that's why I decided I'm gonna put all my energy into YouTube uh, landscape channel. So that's what I'm working on today and I'm working a lot of with uh, with a lot of private private clients and with students. Yeah, with universities. And um, myself, so how long have we been practicing it? Yeah? Uh, What's the question? Yeah. Um, I would say I started practicing basically, I, I started working uh, is a in a landscape architecture office the same time as you, right? Here in Berlin. Here yeah. in Berlin, we actually worked in Slovenia as well. We worked already. in Slovenia. We did like why, a yeah. couple of projects. Yeah, for a year and a half or so. And um, I'm still working as a landscape architect. This is my day job basically. I work part time, uh, four days a week. Um, I'm a creative director at the landscape architecture office, so I deal with most of the you know conceptual phases. And it involves a lot of drawing, and I love that. So uh, it's 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 quite fun. Hmm. Yeah, it is. I mean, I I miss it sometimes, like work working on real projects, constructing things. Um, but I know that some phases were for me not so interesting. Uh, so I'm really excited for this new phase that I'm doing right now. So this is also very, very, very interesting. Uh, do you have any advice for aspiring landscape architects? All right, yeah, it's a good question. Um, I would say, I would say this is a general advice for students, um, but for landscape architecture or architecture or any design field, um, also creative field, is something that we learned you know, the hard way. Nobody told us that when we came out of school. So you come out of school full of, let's say, I don't want to make this sound horrible or bad, but like you come out with hopes and dreams, right? <laughs> um, because maybe you've been really good at school and you got good grades and it's uh, you did great designs and, you know, you were totally free to explore what is possible and you did beautiful renderings or drawings, hand drawings of your project and you had time to graphically make everything yeah. perfect. And then you <laughs> come out to your first job and you're like smacked with, you know, some mundane work and, you know, you had all these ideas and you think I will be now the one that will make the conceptual sketch and this will be built. But no way. I mean, no way. This is not going to happen. So... If I would advise something to myself, I would say, 
more patience because if I had more patience and had different expectations going into the practice, I would know, um, you know, I would just probably be happier and uh, um, let you know, just give myself more time to advance uh, into the positions I, and tasks I wanted to do. That Very would nice. be my, my thing. What about yours? Advice for aspiring landscape architects. Um, yeah, enjoy life. I mean, it's good that you love your job. <laughs> um, but uh, it's good to, to embrace everything that surrounds you. Um, the knowledge that the professors give you and environment. But still, I think you, we... We get so much inspiration also from from the things that we that we experience, right? So don't forget that's also one very important aspect of being a creating a creative person. So you need to think about how will you feed your creativity. Uh, so that's why, yeah, try to relax, relax from time to time, do sport, uh, eat healthy. Um, and find inspiration, like who is your, your role model, who uh, yeah, has the same or similar values that you have and can be someone that you can expect to be or envision yourself to be in a few years. Uh, because that, that helps a lot, right? I mean, to have someone that inspires you mm -hmm. um, and who lives well as well, because of course, we want to do, everyone wants to do something good for the nature, for, for the environment, for people. And you can achieve that just by, by being the best version of yourself. So, yeah, take care of yourself. That's very important. That's very nicely said. Yeah. Thank you. Awesome. Well, we have so many, so many questions here and so many nice things. Um, yeah. Oh, let me just check it out. Yes, we're from Slovenia, Carlos. Uh, we're both from Slovenia. That's why we mentioned it uh, a few times, because we've been to many, many different places, because we were always uh, searching for the best uh, drawing location. Uh, so that's why we know very good places in Slovenia where you can do great sketches. Uh, we were also planning to do a sketching tour in Slovenia for a week or something. Uh, like a course, right? Yeah. Yeah, like yeah. a sketching course, actually, yeah. to do, you know, so you could apply and come to yeah. Slovenia to draw with us. But obviously now um, we're going to postpone it a bit. For a bit, yeah. Okay, what else? I think after you challenge, I also feel more comfortable. I think it helped a lot, especially with composition and what Karsper is describing now from layers. Yeah. Great. I'm glad it helped a lot. We can also switch back and you can see the last uh, details I'm going to do on the drawing. Mm -hmm. um, could, you, could you switch it back? Yeah, sure. All okay. right. So basically this is, what ha this is what's turning out, guys. Sonia will read on the, the questions. So I'll just do some finishing touches. Yeah, just do it. Okay, me, uh, Indranil says, me and my peers are planning to start urban sketching in Kolkata someday. Wow. Awesome. Um, one, one, one point. Not someday. Start it tomorrow. You know, it's so easy to start. Uh, I would be, I would glad to see this community uh, develop there. But I know because I had many ideas uh, up until now. Yeah, someday I'll do that. Someday I'll do this. And this sounds like a good idea. And if you have a good idea, you should just start it tomorrow. It's so easy. Yeah. Yeah, do it. Because um, you can also start with just a Facebook group. Uh, so that idea starts to spread and yeah. then afterwards when this quarantine time is over you can actually start planning one and this is also very important that you have like this step that you did before and then you can start with planning um, okay where I always lose myself when I'm reading those comments uh, uh -huh. Much of landscaping is about the cost of moving 10 square meters of soil from one place to another, says Vincent. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> true. So yeah. true. It's basically all... I, was, I, I thought it's going to be so much about 
creativity, but it was so much calculating how much, how much, uh, how much soil is going to move and how much, it, how much it costs. Mm -hmm. Stinka Katze asks, who of you, which of you started the channel, and why or when did you decide to make more out of it? I love the old videos where Gashper just sits in the grass and draw. All right. So, um, first of all, more of those videos are coming once we're, you know, free to go out again. Um, but I actually, I started the channel, I would say, seven years ago. Seven years? Eight years, maybe already? Seven years. Yeah, seven. Uh, but Sonia was always in the back. You couldn't see her around, but she was the one calming me down when the camera ran out of the battery. She was the one calming me down when I messed something up and was so frustrated. I wanted to draw it again. She was calming me down when my phone tipped over and fell into the river because it was drawing on the river's edge. So yeah, she was from the beginning there supporting me a lot. Yeah. Um, until the, I started it because I was actually, I actually just saw a lot of drawings online and I said, man, I think, I think I can also contribute with my lessons and, you know, ideas. Um, so I started doing that. But pretty soon, um, not soon, but like after a couple of years, it became apparent it is possible to do something more out of it. Yeah. Right? And what would be, what was for you? Like, you joined me then like three years ago, four years ago, really? What was the moment for you where it said, okay, you know, let's do something out of it. You know, you quit your job. I think it was before that. Um, it was before that. And uh, I, I know I was very excited, but also very frightened because me in front of the camera, I never did that before. So uh, I'm a bit awkward and I usually don't know how uh, to choose my words and I'm not very good at improvising. So uh, that's something that I that I needed to learn. That's why that was a lot of stress for me at the beginning. Mm -hmm. And I think I'm getting better and better at it. Yeah, but so much. I can remember um, one thing was that in the office when I started to talk about it, that I have a YouTube channel and it, I have this wish to make it into something more than just like uh, a few videos, that there's really potential to help many people and to reach out to many people. Um, they were not so excited, I must say, because of course, if you're just if you're working in an office, then you're working in an office, and um, I'm I'm not sure that that they were so accepting. And when I saw that, I was even more like inspired to do something on my own. Um, and I just I just noticed that you you created so many nice sketches just because you you got this promise that you're going to keep on doing, keep on pushing yourself oh, yeah, every right. week because yeah. you said, I'm going to do one sketch every week. All oh, right. Yeah, that was my promise initially. Yeah. Yeah. And at the beginning, that was quite a struggle. Later on, we figured out, okay, it's not necessary that it's perfect. And we, we also mm -hmm. evolved. We learned so much when doing, um, when doing cross production. So yeah, you know, we're like pros now, but, uh, yeah, I mean, I just saw the process and I loved it. I loved it. I liked it a lot. Um, and I also, when I was when I was still a student, I did many projects where where we started something new, and I helped uh, start uh, start. I helped to create a startup um, academy once for students, and I mean that was always very fun for me. So that's why I joined. Mm -hmm. right. Yeah. And I'm glad she did. Yeah. Um, <laughs> uh, Giga says, guys, it's not so bad being landscape architect. I all I would also say that at first you didn't realize, really realize all the knowledge that you gathered during study. That's true. Yeah. So yeah, Giga, you're totally right. All the things I just explained about landscape, I learned because I studied landscape architecture. Yeah. That's why I can draw landscapes, I think, because I understand this, you know, I can really understand and grasp it and do the outline of the forest because it would one, you know, just looking at once, I understand how it's, you know, composed of which elements I can even 
understand if it's a deciduous, if it's a con forest or are there conifers and I can read it basically and that helps me to draw. And yeah, it's it's not so bad at all. I mean, I hope it didn't come over as if guys don't study landscape architecture. Like you should. Do. It's one of the best studies that, that you can I do. I think so. Yeah. I think so too. It's amazing. Yeah. And if it's the thing for you, if you love it, you know, it, it can be a beautiful job, I think. Yeah. Yeah. So um, we don't want to scare you away from that. No. Um, it's, it's just the thing that you realize that it's not, that it's a spectrum from creative to very technical. So... Yeah. Um, this is, and we are, you know, more on the creative side, I would say. So maybe that's why the technical details are not like our thing. Yeah. But still, if you consider how many things, how much we learn, right, in this process, and I also see I'm still a landscape architect, although I'm not practicing landscape architecture for the last two years, because I do it so systematically. I'm planning all the steps as if I would be still sitting somewhere in an office planning a project. And um, that's a nice skill to have. And also, I think we do so amazing sketches um, because we know how to read landscape. Yeah. And you understand space so much better. And you can plan it. You can really notice some things that are unknown to other people. Um, and I think that's amazing. I can still remember when we were studying, how often did we say, this is just the best study ever. I mean, because it was so fun and so exciting. It was creative. Um, yeah, and if you, if you still manage to integrate that part in your everyday life, uh, then I think that's a win, right? Yeah. Um, so yeah, Peter sa asked, uh, do we ever do 3D crafts like model making, woodworking, sculpturing and stuff? Oh yeah, um, model, I, you know, we did a lot of model made, our share of model making while studying. Right now, I don't think it is one of my artistic expressions. Um, what about you? Mm -mm. Not 3D, yeah, that's interesting. We're basically staying on the 2D surface um, right now. Yeah. You, of course, you can do it. You can do a lot of 3D modeling. There are a lot of offices, if you ask us per personally, no, we don't do it. Because it's just, uh, yeah, we're working on our sketches. But what I think yeah. it's interesting is um, that we uh, basically always represent a 3D space when we draw, usually. Yeah. Um, usually we try to make an illusion of a, of a space, of a, of a place. Um, and even when we do more abstract stuff, this spaciousness is always in there, I would say. Yeah. But no, yeah, no, not, ne never dipped our toes into, into sculpting or something similar yet. Not yet. Maybe it will come someday. <laughs> The cheese, uh, the cheese melter just joined. Um, cheese melter, hi, awesome nickname. Yeah, um, I, he he thinks he missed a bit. Uh, sketching from photo is easy for me, but framing and filtering elements and perspective and perspective in plain air is very hard for me. Yeah, we yeah. know. We just said in it's, plain air. Yeah. Basically, I would ignore the perspective. I would just say, you know, don't uh, think about it that much. Just try to draw what you see as mu as, as good as possible. Yeah, it's yeah. it's it takes too much time um, to construct a perspective in plain air. I would say, um, yeah. Um, could we switch so I can just show the finished thing once again? Yeah, and, and I do you say that afterwards we finish slowly? Yeah, I yeah. would I would say we could wrap it up. So yeah. Um, Send your last finishing questions and then we'll have something also to announce to you in the end. And now I'll just explain a bit more about this sketch. So as you can see, what I did with those outlines that I created first, basically I filled them with, with textures and with, um, yeah, with, with uh, hatches, with hatchings. So in the front we have like a central darker element where we can also see some some branches, you know, we see those trees, maybe there are more, some more shrubs around. And then there is like a lighter part with this, uh, with this nice um, stream and a bridge. And uh, yeah, maybe we can emphasize that bridge a bit more with some shading. 
so it you know draws the eye because it's interesting. And then we have another dark area, and this is one simple tip. You know, if today we give you like two tips to take away if you sketch uh, space, it's the first is all heads of our people are on the horizon line, and second is make your horizon dark when sketching. This is counterintuitive since when your horizon would always be the brightest uh, layer uh, because the further away the uh, lighter the colors, right? But actually, there is always something in the way on the horizon. So to create an illusion of depth, uh, I would say do the horizon line, not, not the horizon where it touches the sky, but the one that is in our eye height, you know, this was our eye height. Do the horizon line uh, dark, you know, just add some dark spots. And then we have another light layer, and then some more dark, and then, you know, we finish off with the mountains in the back. That's it! So I hope, uh, yeah, I hope you uh, enjoyed it. If you drew along, I'm glad you did. And if you do whatever else, um, I'm really glad you did as well. It was supposed to be a relaxed, just relaxed chat, asking yeah. us questions. We can see if there's any uh, last questions coming in right now. Um, not so many that that we could. Um, no, I think we're we're pretty much okay um, I would maybe say for for the conclusion that um, yeah if you haven't already you should subscribe to our channel we're posting videos usually every week you know we don't want to promote our channel now with this live stream but if you're here already you know, and you really, haven't already you could maybe then you Consi should consider it I mean consider it yeah, consider sharing it with your friends. It's appropriate. It's well, maybe it's appropriate to stretch, but it we it it would make us happy. It, we would appreciate it. We would appreciate. It. So, uh, as we said, if you haven't already and you liked what we did, then we would <laughs> we would be very happy if you would subscribe to our channel. There's a Facebook group called called Linescapers. Can we post that link to the Facebook group again? Yeah. So if you did something today. Take a snapshot with your phone, send it to the Facebook group. We'd love to see it and, you know, we can comment on each other's work. It's worked already for the other sessions. And if you have an Instagram account, you know, snap it, make a story, tag us so we see it and we see what you did. Um, we'd love to see. And now we have also the announcement. So, because it is the, uh, it is quarantine and we all are stuck inside more or less yeah um and we discovered this live streaming we said why not make a schedule so you can always plan your visit and see what we're doing when and let's continue doing this regularly right yeah so that's why we decided to prepare a schedule right and yeah i'm gonna post it on right now all right so but schedule uh, of live events from linescapes so next one that we're gonna have is Monday, March 30th, we're gonna do creative characters. Similar to the last time with the monsters, um, this is a basic creativity exercise, simple entry, you can just join and have uh, watercolors or any other like coffee, wine, any other ha household pigment, and um, we will do some doodling. Share it with friends who are also, you know, not even into drawing, but want to spend a uh, creative hour in this time. Dear Peter, I would like to thank you for the super chat. You're amazing. I All wish you right. a great evening. Thanks, Peter. Thanks for donating. Everything yeah. that you donate or the super chat to us, guys, goes to, you know, to us supporting us to create these videos. Yeah. So let me say just, um, yeah. So the Wednesday, April 1st. Yes, we're still going to sketch. And it's not a joke. Uh, we're going to do landscape with watercolors. Um, I will try to explain how can you draw landscape step by step in watercolors since the Wednesday is the day where we learn something new, uh, different techniques and yeah, just improve your knowledge. Then we had added a new one that we did have last week. So Friday, you guys said that it would be nice to have a correction session. I mean correction, like a session where we look at your drawings and maybe have some suggestions and... 
uh, try to improve them together. So it's let's look at your drawings and send us your drawings, you know, during the week now, up until Friday, whatever you want, and we'll look at them, we'll pick as many as we can and look at them together on Friday. And then we have Saturday, 4th April, or April, April 4th, we're gonna do the relaxation with drawing. I hope we're gonna be so, um, yeah, so relaxed that after after our live stream, you're just gonna fall asleep. <laughs> if it's nine in the morning, then straight back to bed. So all of these um, will basically, definitely, um, Monday and Wednesday, we're gonna do it at the same time as now. We're just having a time switch on tomorrow in Germany, so we'll post the times tomorrow again on our social media so you can see when. And then we'll see the rest Friday, Saturday, if we experiment with other times so people from other time zones can join as well. Be sure to send us the sketches till Friday, though, or drawings or paintings. Thank you very much for joining us for this uh, live stream. We enjoyed it very much. Yeah, we really liked having you. Thanks for holding through. I hope you had a nice time. We really, really uh, enjoyed it. Yeah. So have a great evening. Have a great day wherever you are. Stay safe. Stay healthy. And see you on Monday. Bye-bye.